Okay, this is the first video for Unit 8, and we're going to talk about Eastern Hemisphere trade. Some amazing stuff happens with this trade across the Indian Ocean, across uh, the Bay of Bengal, into the South China Sea. You're going to see all kinds of cool stuff happening, and the cultural diffusion is just like mind-blowing with religions and technologies that are going to be spread everywhere, including things that help with navigation like the compass and uh, paper, all kinds of really, really cool stuff. All right, hope you enjoy. Okay, this is the Unit 8 Part 1 video. We're talking about the Eastern Hemisphere and the trade routes of those places. This is the Eastern Hemisphere, the standards, uh, world history uh, for 10. It's world history 10. That doesn't really apply to you, even though this is our Unit 8. Uh, we're going to talk about locating the major trade routes, the advances that are passed on by that. Uh, and then later on, we're going to talk about, you know, Japan and Africa specifically. But right now, we're just dealing with mostly trade routes. Okay, so what were the major trade routes of the Eastern Hemisphere from about 1000 to 1500 AD? Uh, the Silk Road is probably the most famous, and it goes across Asia to the Mediterranean Basin. And it wasn't just a land route. We're also talking about the sea routes and everything else that happened in this period. There were many maritime routes across the Indian Ocean, and I'm going to show you pictures of all these routes coming up next. Uh, the Trans-Saharan routes across North Africa, mainly salt, uh, trading gold for salt, but there were other items that were traded too. And then Northern European links uh, with the Black Sea, mainly for uh, the selling of fish, which was herring, and uh, a product called amber, which we'll talk a little bit more about later on. And then uh, Western Europe, the sea trades and the river trade routes, and, and they can get really confusing. And then uh, the South China Sea and lands of Southeast Asia, uh, which are going to play a major role not only in you know, producing and sending goods, but technology and religions across those areas. Okay, so this is the Silk Road that I was telling you about. Now, initially, most people think of the Silk Road as a uh, sort of a a land-based route across the land, but it was more than that. The Silk Road becomes sea routes as well, and uh, they sort of spread goods and technology and ideas. Remember, cultural diffusion, big time, throughout this whole region of the world, the whole Eastern Hemisphere. Here are some of the trade routes of the Indian Ocean. You can see the east coast of Africa and Arabia, along with India into China, are going to play huge, huge roles in the cultural diffusion of this time period. East African trade routes, which we'll talk about a lot more in depth as we go, uh, are, are going to play a me major part in developing the culture of the east coast of Africa. You're going to get a mixture of Bantu, uh, which is their base language, and Arabic. Uh, the religion of Islam is going to come in there. These are going to be very culturally diverse areas. And the trade is going to be based on the monsoon winds. Uh, remember, the, the winter monsoon came out of the northeast, so that took you back to Africa. And the summer monsoon came out of the southwest, which took you to India. The Trans-Saharan routes, in other words, across, trans means across, and Saharan, the Sahara Desert. Uh, mainly to the three kingdoms that we're going to talk about when we get to Africa, which are Ghana, Songhai, and Mali. And uh, they needed salt because it was a dry, arid climate, and they had gold, so they traded that. Uh, other things, including later on, slaves, silk, or ceramics, are going to be very big items traded across the Trans-Saharan route. And the European trade routes. Uh, you can see the North Sea and the Baltic Seas. Uh, like I said, fish, herring, uh, the amber, which is fossilized tree sap, basically. Uh, and... Um, also, uh, finished clothing are all going to be items traded through the European trade routes. Check out this. This is the river trade routes of Europe. Dude, I'm confused just looking at all this. I mean, I'm getting dizzy. This looks like what my kids do when they're coloring. It's crazy. All right, Southeast uh, Asian trade routes. Mainly, we're talking about from China into Vietnam and uh, the Philippines, all those areas, which are a bunch of islands below the South China Sea. Okay, so what goods were traded? Well, the main one was gold from West Africa. Spices, uh, 
all different types of spices, peppers and cinnamons and everything you could think of from the lands around the Indian Ocean. Textiles, uh, not just from China here either. We're talking about silk uh, as the primary one, but India, the Middle East, all will produce not just silk, but other cloth as well. Porcelain from China and Persia. Uh, porcelain is, uh, another name for porcelain is China. So that's where uh, it's going to thing. And then later on, Persians are also going to take over part of that trade as well. And then amber from the Baltic region. This is what amber looks like. It's tree sap, and uh, you can tell it can be very, very beautiful. Uh, for those of you that watched uh, Jurassic Park, that's what they got the mosquito out of. He was in the tree sap, where they took the DNA of the dinosaurs. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so now what I would like for you to do in your notes is match up which trade item goes with which place and then uh, sort of analyze why these items developed in western cultures uh, in the box. So in other words they start in eastern lands but later on they become very very popular in the western culture of Europe. Okay so what type of technology was spread? Cool stuff. Uh, paper from China uh, would spread through the Muslim world and then go to the Byzantine world and eventually Western Europe. New crops uh, from all over. India uh, will spread sugar. Rice from China will become popular in other parts of Asia as well. The water wheel will be used to grind uh, and, and mill grain. Uh, also, you know, as a power source, believe it or not. Uh, certainly some really, really cool things happen with water mills and windmills from the w Middle East. Navigation, the compass, uh, will be developed in China. And then the Latin sail, which will be a uh, type of sail that will allow people to sail against the wind. You can tack against it. This is a huge development because up until now, uh, the, the boats on the Indian Ocean depended upon the monsoons to get from one place to another. So now you could go any time of the year because you could tack against the wind. Okay, what about the ideas that get spread? Obviously, religions are a huge, huge idea here. Uh, Buddhism from uh, China to Korea and Japan. Hinduism and Buddhism from India to Southeast Asia. There's a sign for Hinduism. Uh, Islam into West Africa and Central and Southeast Asia. And it wasn't just religions. There were other ideas, too. The concept of printing and uh, the idea of paper money to replace uh, coins, uh, which was much more practical, was developed in China and then spread to other parts of Asia. Okay, so now, why was trade so important to religion and culture? What happened with this trade that uh, had an impact on those things? Okay, so what are the big ideas from this video? First, that trade goods in the Eastern Hemisphere and other parts of the world will lead to stable economies. And the cultural diffusion that occurred due to trade allowed ideas on religion, money, and technology to spread all throughout the Eastern Hemisphere and eventually to the Western Hemisphere. 